Hi, everyone. Karen Roby here for Tech Republic. Happy today to be joined by Noel Calhoun. He's the CTO of Enteros. And Noel, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about AI today in our supply chain. And you spent many years in the public sector, or the private sector, uh, you know, working with the CIA. When we talk about our supply chain, I mean, never before has the light been put on it as so much as it is right now. I mean, I think the vulnerabilities are really showing through. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, it, it absolutely is true. I mean, basically, every day some event is happening that is, base, is showing companies how fragile their supply chains are. Um, it's it, so complicated and so uh, convoluted sometimes as to where, where all of your material, where all of your uh, software, where all of your uh, services come from that a lot of people have a tendency to put them put it in a box and and kind of pretend that it's you know it's working fine until the day it's not um, and then they're kind of made really uh, kind of brutally aware of how of how fragile it is and i think that's what we've seen over the last year year and a half especially with covid but with trade wars uh, with china with software uh, attacks like solar winds with ships going crazy in the suez canal i mean it's just uh, you know a never ending string of things that really disrupt the kind of flow of material and services and goods and and uh and that that's that's been something that uh has brought the kind of the issue of supply chain really to the fore i think in the last you know six months especially yeah most certainly i think that the, just the visual of the ship as you mentioned uh and, and then hearing so much about solar winds i mean even the average person that doesn't think twice about cybersecurity, uh, you know i think they're starting to learn more and more uh, about that so um, you know, when when we talk about AI, and you mentioned this earlier before we were recording about the the um, you know mach machine learning is is often out here. AI is talked about so often, kind of the, the favorite child, so to speak. So, talk a little bit about uh, you know how is this technology helping with the supply chain and down the road? How much more can it be involved to really make a difference in terms of securing uh, you know our supply chain? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, there is a lot of there is a lot of talk about AI and machine learning. I think they're they're siblings, um, you know. In in a way, AI tends to get a lot of buzz because people tend to think of like Terminator and you know uh, you know Sarah Connor and protecting the future and all these things. Um, and I know uh, certain celebrities have helped to help propagate that to some degree. But um, yeah. but really, I think what from a practical perspective, what we're really talking about is the ability to develop software, machine learning software that can interpret uh, the facts, the things that are going on around the world in a way that a human would. And then being able to figure out what's, what's anomalous, what's weird, um, what, sh what is happening that maybe you haven't seen happen before and is in a trend that you don't really want to go that particular way and identifying that and alerting you to that um, or making it really clear when something happens that you can really quickly investigate something without having to spend weeks kind of digging through a bunch of information. So when I was... When I was at CIA, we we consider everyone, all analysts at CIA are kind of considered all source analysts, um, which means that you really are you're not you're not uh, focusing on one particular type of information, human human reported information or um, signal intercepts from NSA or anything. you're not reporting on, you're not thinking about any one particular type. You're thinking about all the types of information that you could possibly bring to bear on a problem, and that's kind of the way I think machine learning and the current kind of trend is is to do an all source analysis approach towards the supply chain. So, you know, is it is it is it a news story? Is it a weather event? Is it the position of a ship in the Suez Canal? Is it um, telemetry on satellites? You know, what information do you need to kind of give you the insights on your supply chain? Well, it doesn't take you know any one of any one of those streams would be too much for a human to process constantly day in and day out. You would have to hire tens, if not hundreds or thousands of analysts all day to be looking at the information to figure out what's going on in my supply chain and how does this affect me? And the, the, everyone realizes that's not doable. So I think machine learning really is the solution there where you, it's not perfect, you're gonna have errors. Um, you have human errors too, so it's not like humans are perfect, but uh, you, you apply the machine learning to basically process all that information and kind of give you a superpower to really observe everything that's going on without having to invest all that human research and effort into it. Yeah, I know when you when you you know talk about the acceptance is it, do people really get that that this is where we are and this is the technology we need to look to because there's so many layers here. I mean, and like you said, you just can't wrap your brain around how many humans it would take 
to, to analyze all of this on a daily basis. I mean, is the, the level of acceptance there? You know, it's interesting. I think um, you would almost, I would almost say the level of acceptance is, is there, but, but in a very kind of uninformed way. I think people are looking for a silver bullet, you know, and, and saying, can, can AI solve my problem? Uh, or can machine learning solve this problem? And, and, and the answer is, um, for those who have worked in this space for a very long period of time is, it is, a, it is one tool in the toolbox and it's, and it's a very important one and one that probably has not been used as much in the past, but just as equally important is how you apply that and the data that you apply to that problem. So it's, it's uh, you know, being able to pull in all the right data at one time and kind of in real time analyze it, uh, that, is, that in and of itself is a challenge. So there's a combination of, of machine learning, which everyone gravitates to and says, okay, if I could just apply some AI to this, I would solve my problem. But what they end up finding out is that's the that's the, the shiny surface of it, and underneath is you know months and months and months, if not years, of, of grunge work, um, going through data and combining it together, putting it into a place where you can analyze it and apply the machine learning algorithms to it. Um, so that's a, that's a little bit of an education for for most people is that you know it's you're not you're not three or four months away from a magic solution if you can just get some AI bring an AI team in and apply it to your data is there's a lot more to it and that's that's where you know from from my perspective is always the problem always at CIA at um, at Ken and show my previous company and today it's always been that data that data groundwork that data plumbing. Um, that ends up taking up a big portion of your time. For, and that's true for, I think, for most machine learning engineers. So. Yeah, most certainly. And, and if you had to, in wrapping up here, Noel, if you had to say, and I know it's hard because this is a, a, a such a, a, a huge topic, but if you had to say in 30 seconds, you know, what is the last, I'd say, year, you know, 18 months, because 2020 and now into 2021 has been such uh, a, a teaching us a lesson when it comes to our supply chain, what has it really taught us uh, here this last year? Well, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's taught us you can't take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think probably the worst thing to happen to supply chain was probably Amazon because you you basically got used to the fact that you could put some, you could, you know, request something from Amazon and it would show up magically, you know, the next day or the day after. And what what the last year and a half has shown us is that even, even Amazon is dependent on these things. I, I went looking for, a piece of woodworking equipment, and it doesn't ship until 2022. I mean, that's how messed up some of the supply chains are right now. Um, wow. it's, just, it's just amazing. Machinery, the demand on manufacturing, the de demand on machinery, idling, uh, you know, car factories for weeks because there are no microchips. Um, you just can't take for granted that if, if, you, if it's needed and you have money to pay for it, that it's just going to show up. It may not. Yeah, I, I think my, my teenagers need to learn that lesson because, you know, they think, I mean, that's all they've ever known, right? They click on yeah. the phone, I want something in three days, two days, sometimes the next day is on the front yeah, yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's you're right. It has changed the way we think of things and that's just not practical. Uh, Noel, it's really been great talking to you. I appreciate you being here with me today. Thanks so much. It's been a blast. Certainly. All right. Well, for much more, uh, what do you need to know on cybersecurity or supply chain, make sure you check out Tech Republic and ZDNet. Thanks for watching, everybody.